Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to our latest product focus piece. This time we are out with Mr. Martin Johnson from uh, Sarah's Machinery and we're going to be talking all things subsoilers. So we've had a bit of a demo today, we've been out in the field, not exactly ideal conditions, we are in November, but it was great to see the machine in action and it was great to actually see the, the neat job it did even at this time of year. So. In theory, it should do a sterling job when the conditions are right. So we're going to talk, well, we're basically going to run through the machine from front to back, side to side, see what it's made of, basically, quite literally. And we're also going to be talking the hot topic of uh, grants as well, because you can get grants at the moment. Uh, this being, where are we now? We're November 2021, so depending on when you're watching this. So right now, November 2021, there is a grant out for this kind of machinery, which uh, I think we'll kick off with, Martin. So... The grant, I mean, I mean, what is it? The grant is the Farming Technology Grant. Um, it is available on this very machine, um, as well as lots of other machines, if you're interested. Currently, the grant, if you apply for it before the 7th of January, basically this very machine here, or the smaller ones, or even the larger ones, you'll, you can receive up to uh, £2,804 on grant. So that's, what, that's before January 2022, is it? You've got to... Yes. apply for that yep january 7th 22 right got um, you and like I say there's a vast array of machines you can get with that grant including subsoilers yes yeah there was a grant scheme available last year on the subsoilers and that proved very successful and we sold a lot of machines through that and this time rather than just being open to stewardship schemes it's open to everyone who claims a rural payment pretty right. much so a lot bigger a lot more scope on it this time so yeah we thought come and show the machine off and that's See how it. It's done. Ideal. Well, that's the grant covered. So let's let's talk machine then. Let's talk about your subsoilers. Just, I mean, to kick off, just talk us through maybe some of the design touches and some of the design features that you've put into the machine into this machine. Basically, why why have you done the the way you've done it? Because <laughs> um, in the marketplace there wasn't many straightforward machines for doing a simple job. So there was a, a space in the market for them, and we've built them and designed them. To what we know of our experience with grass of what would work best and what would do the job most efficiently at the same time it was built with cost in mind um because the market isn't always the people who want to spend a vast sum of money on a simple machine <laughs> so we've, we've built and designed a machine that will fit a budget quite nicely for what it does and we build them for the sizes for the people who want to use that machine for that purpose yeah so the average livestock dairy any any sort of livestock farm any grassland at all even just cut for hay it's still designed to do the job well and it's designed and engineered to last a long time doing the job uh almost all the all the wearing parts all the consumables are available off the shelf anywhere yeah the discs uh, the skf hubs yeah everything is designed to be available from anywhere really and as i say it's not complicated um the machine's pretty well balanced the actual balancing point of the machine is this back bar so if you lifted it with a strap off here, it'll balance perfectly. That's so it. As, as we found out this morning, getting it off the trail, yep. literally one strap round there, boys and girls, straight up, and it was pretty much perfectly balanced, wasn't it? Yep, so the weight's on the legs, so it's putting the weight down where you need it. Um, yeah, the transfer from the roller works nicely on them, and it's, yeah, it's a very cost-effective way of rejuvenating your grass, getting more air into the soil. Of course, the water drainage, and I think that's pretty much the grants basically based on is rather than having surface runoff water let the water grow in the ground to do some good yeah let it free up the nitrogen the uh, micronutrients and bacteria in the soil let it do its own thing and and the price of nitrogen the more you can let it do that yourself then the better absolutely especially at the moment yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah very simple simple straightforward machine um the discs are all mounted on inertia rubbers so they will follow the ground very nicely if they hit anything hard they will move they'll ride over 
and they'll get a bit of flex and because the system they're on it keeps an even pressure on all the discs all the time yeah so there, there you got your well this is a four leg machine obviously four discs one in each one in front of each leg and they're just mounted on a box section from runs from one side to the other end. yep simply adjustable on the handle six positions wrap all the way out of work and depending on how deep you go you just want to be running the di discs in two three inches deep cut the cut the grass sod cleanly before it goes through the leg so you don't get any wrapping or any issues so yeah, skf hub so very good strong hubs same hubs we actually use in the mold drainers yeah so they will take i'm gonna say tried and tested <laughs> yeah yeah and to say available everywhere same with the legs the legs are the same as the mcconnell shaker shaker eight legs so legs are available anywhere the points are available anywhere there is also a wider point option available on them you can also get a um, wearing plate for the front of the legs uh, a wearing edge but in grassland we find you better off without it it causes less disturbance without the wearing edge on the front yeah um, but there is they are available from most part suppliers um, if you did want to go down that route um, very 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 simple shear shear protection on the legs which is just two m16 65 mil bolts mm. um just stand m8s off the shelf anywhere any hardware store you've probably got a dozen of them laying in the shed somewhere yeah <laughs> so if there ever is an issue they can just be replaced um so as well as clamping the the leg onto that bar they are yep. the shear point as well yep right I mean, so they'll literally just pop off if, yep. if needs be they will take a larger bolt but prefer to run this bolt because it's just a simple shear protection yeah uh, if you do put bigger bolts in and you do hit something hard you can break the top casting cap which that's a lot of time and expense to getting it going again. Mm. Very, very simple roller on some <laughs> simple turnbuckle adjustments. There's no rocket science on it. Yeah. Uh, greasable bearings on it. Uh, scraper that we actually run in front of the roller. I was going to say, you've got your scraper in front, yep. not at the back like a lot of people. What's your sort of reasoning for that? We find it tends to let the roller rotate freer because um, you don't get the stone wedge in the jamming, mm. but also it keeps a constant pressure. The build-up on the on the scraper will actually keep a constant pressure and keep the roller running cleaner. So rather than having a gap on a scraper at the back, which allows um, dirt to consolidate and build on the roller and mm. always creates a tight spot on the roller, if you have it at the front, it's constantly putting pressure on the roller, which actually allows the roller to turn freer, right. um, to keep it clean. And yeah. So by having you know what looks like a build-up of you yeah. know dirt along here, it's actually cleaning up the roller as it's going around yeah, it's which we have found today yep i mean today was far from the ideal conditions yeah. for it and there was never any issue with the roller losing traction it kept spinning all the time and then just going back to the legs actually um obviously yours are they're all in line on this so what's your kind of again what's your reasoning for all in line rather than staggered as you see on quite a few machines staggered is generally more of an i like to think as an arable based machine yeah. um so it allows more room for the trash to go through with the grassland, because it keeps the top tight with having the grass on there and the roots of the grass and the sod on the top, it will keep it flowing through. Um, it's surprising how much trash you can put through these without any issue. Um, we do have people going to cover crops and to arable mm. with them and there's no real issue with blocking. Um, but the good thing of having the legs all in one line is it allows the machine to be so much more versatile. There's a lot of um, different positions to mount the disc in that allows you, with the top link, to lengthen and shorten it so you can control the, the, the angle of the points and you can control how much lift you get as, mm. you go through the, as you go through. So if you want less lift, you can lengthen the top link, back it back a bit, lean the whole machine back. The roller's got plenty of adjustment on it to allow it to go back. And if you want more lift, you can pitch it forwards and get more lift. So as I say, with the movement of the discs and the adjustment on the roller, it allows you to pitch it where you want it to be. And I believe, I think you mentioned it before, you can actually, if you really want, you can spin these brackets around yep. as well. If you want some real depth, if you want to, yeah, you can lift the discs all the way up and you can run that, you can turn that bracket round, which will give you another four or five inches more roller height. Right. So then you can really go in deep, but normally, normally depending where your pan is, generally for, depending on your land obviously, but with sheep, we say four to six inches where the compaction is. Mm. With cattle, it's six to nine inches. And with tractors and machinery running around, depending what machinery you're using, you might want to go up to 12 inches deep to get underneath it. Yeah. But the machine will do far more than that. If you wanted to go, <laughs> and we do have a lot of people still use them in arable conditions. I was going to say, can you use this in arable as well? Yep, a lot of people just drop the middle legs out sometimes and lift the front, lift the middle discs, and then you can run it as a, for ripping out your tram lines or, 
yeah, into straight into arable yeah. and ripping out any tough bits in gateways, any awkward bits. And when you're when you are a subsoil, what you what's the sort of action that you're looking for? When you get to the bottom, you'll find when you get to your pan, you'll find the the um, when you get the points underneath the pan which is the bit you want to be breaking up, mm. you'll find that it'll ride up and over the points. So it'll come right up into the disc, which is above the leg, so it doesn't try and force it out before. It cuts, the, it cuts the grass on top, the grass will ride over in a wave and then come back down on the roller. So it'll break the ground every direction. It'll break the pan underneath yeah. and really give it some flex in the soil and then the roller will just consolidate it down. Um, if you're not in quite deep enough, you'll find it'll just try and curl the edges back. Mm. It'll try and open up the, the soil on the edge rather than it going up and over. Um, and really, if you can get it running smoothly up and over, it, I personally think, everyone's got their own opinion, but I personally think that does the most work. You want a good lift, job. yeah, to yeah. get that proper shatter. Yeah. And we were, we were chatting before when we were uh, playing in the field, um, we were talking about like ideal forward speeds, but there's no real sort of ideal speed it's just down to the conditions really you're down to your conditions you're down to your horsepower i mean we recommend this machine and used it ourselves on a 95 horsepower tractor um so th then your forward speed can be limited on your ground conditions yeah. <laughs> um but really yeah as long as you're not going crazy with it and trying to fire the dirt <laughs> over the top of the roller yeah. um it's, it's just down to being sensible with it really um yeah. say it's all built to take it I was going to say, let, let's talk about some of the materials that you guys use, because... I mean, the, the framework is pretty much, the, the outer frame, the inner frame, sorry, is basically just um, box construction. It's it's a quite a high-rated box, it's not just the cheapest mould you'll find around. Uh, a lot of our steels we use, like what's on the side plates, is actually Swedish steel, so it is very, very good quality steel. Um, we don't see the point in cutting corners with cheap steel. We don't use mild steel on anything because it's, for the price you pay for the steel, you're better off putting a little bit more into the machine. It's easier for us as well because the plasma cutters cut it nicer and smoother and better. Mm. It welds nicer. So you're just better off using slightly better quality materials. We sold a lot of these last year. I think we sold about 130 of them last year, which was quite remarkable and of which we've had no issues with any of them. So, I mean, um, obviously we've gone through the technicalities of the machine. Um, what widths can you get and uh, what space, leg spacings on the machines can you get? Um, we start off at the 1.2, which is very more sort of much more than domestic sort of or smaller scale type machine, um, which is an option as a one or two leg. And then we go to the 1.8 meter. Which is, which is in a one, two and three, and the uh, three leg option and three legs and upwards of course is available on the grant. And then we go up to the uh, most popular one of all, which is the 2.4 metre four leg. That'll be this one. Yep, I mean we do this as a two. Um, the reason why we do also do it as a two is if you haven't got the horsepower there. Mm. If you are restricted heavily on horsepower, then you can go with the two leg and then split your working. So you'll drive yeah. back up in between your rows it's not quite the same job as using the foreleg. We do the free leg as the same machine. The spacings are set out to 900s rather than 600s mm. like they are on here. But as I say, the best all-round working machine for everyone, I pretty much guess, is the 2.44 metre. Yeah. Uh, it's handy for roadways, gateways, getting in and out of places. Don't need a ridiculous tractor on it to use it. Yeah. Um, then we go to the 2.8, which is available as a four and a five. And then we go to the three meter, which is available also as a four and a five leg right. machine. So finally, Martin, just before we uh, wrap up, let's have a word on prices. Obviously, it's going to vary because, you, you know, you'll have tie ups with dealers and things like that. So we can't give too much away. Yep. Um, but, <laughs> you know, if you could just, you know, give us a sort of rough sort of idea. Yeah. What people can expect. Um, price wise. They're not an expensive machine um, from the get-go. Uh, the, the things are kept fairly simple on the machine and the number we build of them does help a lot with the price. But I think you'll find if you contact any any of our um, dealers or ourselves, you'll find out the price is extremely competitive on the machines. I don't think there's much else priced out there in the same mm. bracket. Um, and with the grant, it is very very inexpensive to own one yeah. <laughs> i'll put it that way it's the, the grant covers the vast majority of it yeah. and only leaves a small amount left to to pay for the machine which is makes a, a very good value machine for money 
a bit of one not to miss out, really. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's it. So, Martin, well, thank you very much for uh, coming out today and having a little bit of a demo with uh, your subsoil. I'm sorry the conditions were, weren't a little bit better than they were, but, uh, yeah, considering it's November and we've had plenty of rain, I think the results were pretty neat, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah for the ground conditions, it hasn't done any harm out there. No, not at all. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm interested to see what it's like in the spring, see what it's, uh, see what, it's uh, had, uh, what the effect it's had on it. So, there you go, ladies and gents. Uh, hope you've enjoyed that and learned a little bit about uh, Ceres subsoilers. As ever, go check out the website, lampowertv.com, for a lot more uh, reviews and custom reviews and uh, product-focused pieces such as this one. And, Martin, thank you. Thanks again, basically. Not a problem. It's been a pleasure. Cheers.